Starflight is really an interactive science fiction novel. You know, there's aliens, space combat, exploration, resource collection, all of the things you would expect in a space-themed game. There's even a huge algorithmically generated universe, for example. But the thing that's really unique and exciting about it is, like any good science fiction novel, there's meaning. I think if you ask 10 different people what their take is on Starflight, you'll get 10 different answers. But at the end of the day, Starflight is uh, its a single-player sci-fi RPG sandbox where you can reveal the story any way you want, just because you can go anywhere you want in the galaxy. Starflight 3 takes place in a whole new section of the galaxy. There's still a connection to the story in Game 1 and Game 2. There's some of the same alien races, for example. But there's a whole new set of alien races with their own motivations, their own relationships with each other, their own uh, alien perspectives and cultures. But it's still that same central idea that was at the core of Starflight 1 and 2. Games often have the trappings of science fiction, but they don't offer what we love most about science fiction. And what we love most is really an insight. You come away with some kind of understanding, some inspiration. That's what science fiction is for those of us that truly love it. We're crowdfunding through FIG so that we can go through a proper discovery, pre-production, production cycle, basically the full critical path for Starflight 3. You know, it's not just about the money. When you crowdfund a game, and we learned this when we did Toe Jam and Earl, you hear stories and testimonials from people, sometimes very personal ones. And we heard some of these from friends of ours, people um, who are now big in the industry that we didn't even know were fans of Starflight. The best computer we had was my dad's computer. And, he, and we had this sort of shed in the back that he had turned into this sort of nerd den. I'd actually sneak out. I found a way to break into the place and I'd break in in the middle of the night and I'd, I'd loaded Starflight onto this thing and I'd, I'd just play it until I, I couldn't keep my eyes open. Everybody wants cause and effects. Like SimCity is a great example of cause and effects. And then on the opposite side we had like full motion video games which were, were the least amount of cause and effect and those failed as a category. To me I, I just keep sort of keep coming back to that as being what they did so great with Starflight. You'd see these sequences like the 3D generated, you know, terrain when you zoom down. And that's the inspiration. That's the thing that drove, you know, the next developer to see something and go, oh, I could make a whole game on a 3D world. You see, this is what I think a game like Starflight did. It just sets fire to the imagination and it has developers all over the world saying, I want to make games. You, like, you don't understand. Like, I can say it, but. It is, it is absolutely certain that if Starflight did not exist, I would not be a game developer. Like, if Starflight didn't exist, Gearbox wouldn't exist. That means Borderlands would not exist. 